Just a quick update on the LLF card. It's been a few months since we launched. I wanted to just let you guys know where we're at with it. Firstly, thank you to all of you who have signed up as a member. I love reading all the messages about all the savings you're making. So I hope you are enjoying the offers we have on there. So guys, there's now over 100 companies on board offering our members exclusive LLF only deals. There's so many offers, I couldn't go over them in this video, but I've picked a few just to highlight some of the benefits. So for starters, every member has free access to an accident and recovery service provided by Acton Coachworks. If you're unfortunate enough to have an accident or breakdown inside with the M25, Acton Coachworks will come and recover your vehicle back to the garage and deal with your whole claim. This is a 24-7 round-the-clock benefit and this comes as standard with your LLF membership. Also, insurance companies like Adrian Flux are on board offering up to 15% of their car insurance premiums. We have a dedicated LLF quote line and I'm telling you, I've received messages already from members who have saved around £350, which is just another massive benefit of becoming a member. We've got the biggest tuning shops and garages either on board already or in the process of coming on board. There's exclusive LLF members only offers from Evolve Automotive, NVM Motorsport, DMS Automotive, MSL Performance, Night Racer, the Auto Works, National Tires, TDI Tuning, DD Coding, AET Motorsport, Sambo's Tires and many more. They're all there. Just check out their deals on the card. We've also got window tinting companies, carbon fiber fabricators, car accessory providers like Air Shroud, Mega Mounts and Emoji Fresh, custom plate makers like Full House Customs and JDM Plate. Vehicle tracking devices, ghost immobilizers like what are installed on the M4, even discounted exhaust systems, money off wheels and tires, and detailing companies like AWC and Artisan Automotive. The list just goes on and on. And this one I know is going to be popular. We've just launched a nationwide LLF members discount with Team Sport Karting, where you can save 20% at over 35 tracks all around the UK. So if you're not yet a member, hopefully you've now seen some of the benefits and you'll now head over to LLFcard.com and sign up. And remember, all these deals are exclusive to the LLF. LLF card. You can't find these on websites or voucher code sites. They are all just for LLF members. Just before I go, our promotional launch offer ends in 48 hours after this video has been published. So if you do sign up now, you can still get your membership locked in at just $1.99 a month or $19.99 a year for as long as you stay a member. So thank you again to everyone who has already signed up. And for those who haven't, please consider checking out LLFcard.com where you'll see all the benefits of subscribing and of course supporting the channel. How are we doing, Kevin? Hello, mate. Welcome to Living Life Fast. Good to meet you. What is this? The world's fastest shed? It's yeah, it's the world's fastest shed. Um, I've got the Guinness World Record, and also it's registered on V5 as the fastest shed. So, so is there other sheds that people have done? I think uh, I have yeah, seen stuff in the past. Yeah, people people have done them. Um, Ed Chiney used to have one. Not sure if his was road legal or not. Um, at the moment, this is the only fully approved road legal one in the world. What is the original car? I mean, do you even call it a car? It's a bloody shed, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, it's fun, that's what it is. It's based around a 4 motion Passat, a B5 4 motion Passat, 1999. Um, I bought the car originally for the front end for... I got a diesel one that I had a little accident in, so I bought it for the front end. Okay. So it then sat on my drive uh, and I wanted to build something. But I was on a very tight budget. So um, eventually I came up with the idea um, of building a shed around it. <laughs> as you do. Kevin, what on earth inspired you to want to make a driving shed? Uh, well, I didn't have a front end. And in the back, my back garden, I've got a big shed that I built. Uh, with the materials I had left, I built like a lean-to wood stall with the door on it. Okay. And I stood back and I looked and I thought, bonnet, car. <laughs> Uh, and I wanted to do something different as well. It's, it's easy to do everything the same as everybody else. Underneath this sleek wooden exterior is quite a complex steel framework. Okay. So the whole thing is incredibly strong. So what kind of weight are we looking? Is it is it heavy? Like yeah, it's uh, two and a quarter tons. So it's, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's uh, but it's aerodynamic, so they're a huge issue. Right. Um, which aerodynamics. When you use using any or any vehicle, it starts having an effect at about 45 to 50 miles an hour, mm. and then the faster you go, the the, the worse it gets. Okay. So you're holding some records with this as well, aren't you? Yeah. Was it um, Guinness Book of Records? Yeah, I I've, I've hold the Guinness World Record. Um, fastest I've ever have ever been in it is 112.68 miles an hour. So uh, does it get to speed and then kind of hit a brick wall almost? Yeah, when, once you get up around sort of 90. No uh, error. 
uh, yeah, and that's just aero. Um, I have done some work to, to try and reduce it, um, but I need to do a little bit more. Engine wise, what's going on engine then? So obviously... Engine, what's going on with the engine? Originally it was a 2.8 V6. I'd never built it to race it, but the first big event I went to there was a drag strip. Uh, that's how it all started. I went and bought a B7 RS4, wow. which, had, which had got a bit of a checkered past. Um, but I had, it was all above board, I had all the paperwork, it was all official. Um, then I, I did some work on the engine, stage two the engine. So I'm up around 450 brake now. And that was a MRC, right? That was an MRC tuning, yeah. yeah. Um, brilliant company and Doug there really knows his stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, putting this V8 in it, I'm, apparently I'm the first person in the world to put B7 RS4 running gear into a B5 Passat. So what's it been like with this latest engine then? Has it Absol been a lot more reliable than oh, the previous? Yeah, with this engine, it's been absolutely brilliant. I've done probably two and a half thousand miles in it now. Uh, the engine really suits it because V8s just deliver the power differently mm. and it's so flexible. I can go down to 20 miles an hour in six gear uh, or I can do 70 in second. Mm. Uh, and I can pull away in second, so you know I've got all the flexibility. If I want power, I just keep it in the red line. What's going on with suspension and wheels? Uh, suspension, I built a hydraulic system. You buy a kit from uh, Raven Hydraulics, but on each corner, all you get is hydraulic ram, and you have to make your suspension from that. I've got it all on remote control. All right, four wheel drive as well. Yeah, it's got all Quattro running gear. Yeah. Every shed should have. <laughs> and then uh, what about wheels and tyres and also brakes? Uh, yeah, uh, just to be prudent on the wheels and tyres, I'm running on T4 van wheels with commercial tyres because the whole structure of the tyre is a lot stronger. Up there behind me, that's all. That's to do with aerodynamics, that's to try and put a little bit of air in behind where I've, I've got a, a huge vacuum that pulls along. But it works, but it's just a gesture for the amount of air it needs. And then uh, what about interior? So uh, you've got these custom doors you've had to make. Up yeah, there. yeah. Um, the doors, as I was building it, I didn't want door handles on it. So I actually made my own solenoid door locks, uh, which were Jaguar boot locks. But I made everything. And I've got electric windows in it as well, uh, which came from the Passat. But I just modified it all. You know, worked with all the bits that I'd got. And when I put the V8 engine in, people said I had to use the B7 clocks. I haven't, I've used the B5 ones. <laughs> and you'll see, everything works in there. Okay. So, uh, Kevin, should we go hit the road? Yeah, let's go for a drive. See what it can do. <laughs> yes, yeah, you're going to love yeah. this. Yeah? It isn't what you think it's going to be. Well, it looks quick. Yeah, it but really it's not quick. that. It's you, you wait till you get inside it. Okay, let's do it, man. Turbo in it needs to be 
because it was old, old school, you know, all the pipes were old and everything was old. And even though at the end I changed everything, I was having problems with new parts fading. Okay. Which I got to the point I'd had enough. So I put this in, but this suits it so much better. And what about clutch and stuff? I mean, is there like extra stress? Or... Yeah. Um, so when I'm drag racing, I don't launch really hard. Yeah. There's no point. Because I have to drive it there and drive it home. So I'll just launch, you know, reasonably, but I'm, I'm sympathetic towards it. So how long do you plan to keep it? Like, is there any intentions of doing something else? I've no intentions of selling it. If somebody wanted to buy it, and he offered me an awful lot of money, but it's not for sale. It's, uh, it's about my journey in life, the amazing people I've met, the uh, places I've been, you know, Triple Ant's end to John O'Groats, around the top of Scotland, been to the Isle of Man twice now. Um, the amazing engineers that, that I've met, the skills we've got in this country, I'd have never met these people, plus the laughs and the fun I've had. How much are you driving, sorry? I've done 32,000 miles in it now. It's just such a brilliant engine, it's, yeah. you know, because I'm on the road, so I drive it quite sensibly. You know, I'm at race events most weekends, straight line racing, although I have done a few laps of Silverstone, that was quite exciting. I've done Castle Coombe a couple of times, I've done uh, Rockingham. What's that actually like around the corners? It's, it's reasonable, and you've got physics that comes into it, because I've got a lot of top weight, so the physics are trying to push it off the track, and the hydraulic suspension is trying to keep it on, you know. It's not a sports car, but you're sitting in it now. There's nothing wrong with it happening at all, is there? Uh, what's the uh, fuel like? I just run on smiles, McAllen, not miles, yeah. McAllen. <laughs> and it's 450 horsepower, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Every time any not 60s in it? Or? No, I haven't, but I just did the quarter mile on the Isle of Man at 16, 14.6 seconds at 95 miles an hour. Well, chuffed with that. But that's like not far off of like an E46 M3. Yeah. That's bloody quick. Yeah. No traction issues, obviously. No. No. There's got the quattro running here. When you drive this on motorways, you have to drive defensively all the time. Yeah. So I tend to drive a bit slower than everybody else, about 60. Find the space on the inside lane. It's fastest shared, uh, Instagram, Facebook. I do one or two others, but those are the two main ones. Yeah. But yeah, have a look on, like, see my content. I look back, see what I've done. You can see my whole journey on there. So guys, as always, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you're new, and I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.